Hello, my name's Rolly, ZO1BQD. Now, I'm fortunate enough to have a revisit with Gary, ZL3 Sugar Victor, and ask uh, some of the questions that you have asked uh, on YouTube and see if we can give it, get some answers from uh, Gary himself. Now, on, on this video, we want to discuss that monster of a ballon that he had uh, on the tree there. Let's talk to Gary uh, further about it, shall we, and find out a few more details. Come on, let's go. Well, here we are, Gary, back at the top of the hill here again, and, and in front of this uh, magnificent ballon. And, uh, well, I've had a lot of questions on, on the YouTube channel about it. And, uh, well, go to it and, and explain it a little bit more to us, uh, Gary. Uh, specifically, what's inside that jolly thing? Okay, it's got some big toroids inside it, and uh, there are a whole stack of uh, toroids and some very thick cable. <clears throat> this is a commercial um, that's uh, come off a, a radio transmitter, commercial radio transmitter. <clears throat> uh, at the bottom here, we've got 50 millimeter or two inch uh, polythene, black polythene pipe, which goes down to the house. So there's plenty of room for putting more cables through. And then the cable that comes out of that is about the size of RG213. It's actually Heliax cable, but it's about the size of RG213. <clears throat> that comes into the base here, which is uh, 50 ohm. I've got this mesh around it because I've uh, got some very inquisitive goats here. That um, <laughs> I kind of joke, Rolly, that the goats do a great job uh, mowing the lawn yep. and trimming the edges, but they yep. don't always empty the catcher in the right place. <laughs> <clears throat> anyway, they do a great job, although right. you'd think by the, the ground at the moment that they're on strike. But uh, anyway, this is to stop them from uh, nibbling away at the cable. Um, so 50 ohms in and 600 ohm balanced open wire line out. This is all full of oil and so there's no PCBs or anything uh, there. This is uh, the story on that. And as you can see, there's a lightning um, probes on here. Um, the open wire line that's going up to the antenna, this is about uh, 50 millimeter, sorry, 10 millimeter diameter and the spacing for that, if you take the diameter of your wire and multiply it by about 70 or 75, that gives you the spacing for, right. s for 600 ohm. Yeah. Now, normally, uh, in this case at the moment, I am just doing some changes to the antenna because I've just lowered it slightly. Um, I've got to do a little bit of work just at the other end uh, to tension it up a bit and so I've got it down but the important things of open wire line is yes to have your impedance your spacing in relation to the wire diameter but to have a cyclic twist you remember the old days of 300 ohm open wire line yes. for your TV antenna yes yeah. well it usually if it was put in correctly would have a cyclic twist that's correct yeah and yeah. the reason for that is if there's interference out to one side it means that both wires get exposed to that interference equally yes therefore there's no potential difference between the two wires so therefore it doesn't see it yeah yep, so correct i haven't got this one just at the moment because i'm just in the process of uh, doing some changes yep. and uh, putting the antenna up a bit higher i had an arborist come here recently and trim some more of the branches, right. change the polarity of some of the trees down there. You don't talk <laughs> about cutting trees down, but yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. these are old pine trees, and we this, most of this is all native bush. So any of the pine trees, apart from the ones that have my antennas on, um, we're slowly, you know, getting rid of them and using them for firewood. So yeah. that's the story. I guess then that uh, you're using 600 ohm ladder line uh, or you've made your ladder line to, to be 600 ohms you must have a 12 to 1 if my math is correct a 12 to 1 um, ballon inside your there. inside your tank there that's it that's yeah. it there so yep. 12 to 1 12 to 1 now, 50 now Gary, in tell me is it important where you have that ballon? I mean, could you have that ballon down the shack end or do you have it this end? Yes, where, yes. I mean, That's a question I often get asked. Uh, where yeah. do you actually place a ballon? You place the ballon where you change the impedance. Yeah, yes, I could put the ballon down at the house, but then I'd have to run open wire line all the way down to it. Yes. 
right? Yes. So it's everywhere that you change it. For example, if you wanted to run, if you had a 50 ohm antenna uh, matching, and say it was three or 400 meters away from where your radio room is, you could run it up into a ballon like this, yep. at right at one end, run the open wire line, cyclic yep. twist, all the way up to the site, and then another one to take it back to 50 ohms, yep. and your losses would be much lower than if you were using similar sort of like coax. If you're yeah, using yeah, RG213, yeah. Yeah, yeah. you know, particularly on 10 meters or higher, yes. you're gonna find the losses start to really accumulate. Yes. Um, yeah, yeah. I've got a half wave uh, up on that tree over the other side here, yes. and um, <clears throat> that's another, oh, probably another 150 meters further right. up the hill. Right. Um, and I'm just using RG213. Yes. Um, you know, it's, it, it runs a kilowatt, no problem. So mm. um, that's, that's what I use. Now, the other question, uh, another question that occurs to me, um, uh, Gary, is that uh, you're using this massive uh, great antenna from 160 through to, um, you know, to daylight just about. Yeah. <laughs> I guess you could, you could actually use it on two meters as well, really. Uh, it's restricted it, by the frequency response of the ballon. Yes, and that's what I was going to ask you. Yes. So, um, how, how do you get uh, the ballon, uh, or how have you designed the ballon to actually cover the frequency range that you want? I guess uh, from 160 to 10 meters, yes? Uh, it actually goes lower than that, 471 kilohertz I've right. used it on. Okay, and this well, antenna becomes two half waves in phase on that frequency and it works superb. I can hear Australia on, on 471 or 2 uh, <laughs> kilohertz, no problem. Right. Um, but um, I didn't make the ballon, uh, this is a commercial ballon, and it's frequency that I've run with a tracking generator and a spectrum analyzer, um, shows that it works from the broadcast band up to 30 megs, reasonably, reasonably flat. But uh, I have tried it on six meters, and I can trigger repeaters over in Wellington, which is about probably 160, 180 kilometers from here, right. um, without too much problem. But um, no, I generally try to have sort of more dedicated antennas, just like I do for two meters and 70 centimeters. And uh, those two bands, yeah. I've got a yeah. vertical collinear array. I've got a few of those and that gives me 12 dB gain on 432 and about 9 dB on two meters omnidirectional. Okay, so you've designed the balance that it gives you the wide uh, frequency response. Now the other thing is uh, you're running uh, legal power up uh, from the shack up to here. Yeah. Um, how do you... Yeah, what sort of balance have you got to actually handle the legal power? I mean, it's got to be pretty big. How, what is your design criteria, I'd say, uh, it would be the question, in, in designing a ballon to handle uh, our full legal power here? Well, <clears throat> my opinion is, and it's just that, is to always run a ballon which is many, many times more than you're going to use, because there are so many ballons out there where people are running the legal limit, one kilowatt into it, and if you were to put a thermometer on it, doesn't matter whether it's an oral or a rectal thermometer, but it will tell you, show you if there is any heat being lost in it. Right. And if that ballon is even slightly warm, you're losing power. You've and got you losses, might have yeah. a perfect SWR and you might convince yourself it's all working fine. And when you measure that, you can see that you're losing power in the ballon. And yes. that's why commercially, um, one of my company's uh, designs and builds radio and television stations, another one operates 10 digital TV channels and about right. 19 radio stations. But the point of it is that when we're using fixed frequencies, we use coax as a matching to, for example, a folded dipole. Yes. But we don't use ferrite uh, balance. But in this case, I had the opportunity of getting this one it's, yes, it's a huge overkill, but it will also stand a direct lightning strike, which it's already done. Yeah. So that's the, the, the reasoning behind it. Um, and it's a little bit like the amplifier. This is just made of things that I already had available. Yeah. Um, so yeah, but 
But I mean, one, one of the rules of thumb uh, in, in commercially, I remember when we were putting up uh, matching networks and so on like that, is make the matching network at least uh, 10 times the capability yes. of the power that you're putting into it. Absolutely. And uh, you're right, uh, particularly when you've got ferrites, I mean, the moment you get a bit of heat, not only are you um, uh, you've got losses, but you're also starting to saturate the ferrite, and uh, now yes. your bellin is no longer a bellin the moment the yep. ferrite gets saturated, isn't it? Yeah, well, look, you know, hey, our maximum speed limit here in New Zealand is 100k. Yep. We don't buy cars that only just do 100k, do we? No, right? that's right. You know, because all we'd be doing is, you know, thrashing them to bits, and yeah. um, how yep. long would they last? So that would be the issue. Exactly. So, well, that's yeah, it's, it's, um, it, uh, it does the trick nicely. Um, as I say, I've got these lightning probes here, which uh, probably don't really do much because internally, both this side of it and the other side, the 50 ohm and the 600 ohm side, are all at hard DC ground. If you put a multimeter across there, it is zero in a big way. Um, yeah. So the cabling in there is not so much cabling, it's solid pieces of copper strip uh, which would be probably uh, probably 10, 12 millimetres uh, thick, solid copper. Right. And quite substantial, um, but of course it would need to be. Um, yes. But, uh, yeah, it takes took three people to lift it up here. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, so, yeah, so I've been using that now for all probably 12, 15 years, and... Um, yeah, I get pretty good reports on it, and yes, indeed. it just does the trick all right. As it you can does. see around here, there's just an endless number of trees and opportunities to put up antennas. Um, this backstay I've got here has got a 60 ton uh, breaking strain wire rope on it, and it's also got um, some uh, hose clips on it with a aluminium uh, wire going up as well. And that just acts as an auxiliary antenna. Um, I sometimes use that on data, I have the other rig running. Yeah. And I can also, um, if I'm using the half-wave dipole up there, say for receiving and the big one for transmitting, I can go within 200 kilohertz of where I'm transmitting, even with the amplifier on. Uh, yes, I do have to put the attenuator on a bit, but on the TS-2000, I can receive signals even that close by. Brilliant. So it's pretty clean. Yeah. Well, thanks, Gary. I mean, you've answered all the questions that I've had, and I think most of the questions that have come through the YouTube uh, 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 clips on, on the ballon and so on like that. So, um, There's a lot of good questions, because a lot of people, you know, they've got a lot of skills, and yep. I'm not saying this is right or wrong. This is just what I happen to do, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I'm happy with it, um, yeah. and happy just to share some of the... Um, of what I've done, so. And that's the essence of amateur radio, isn't it, really? It's, yeah. it's brilliant.